Hey, hey guys and gals, Danny Boy here, and today I have the Samsung Galaxy A15 5G. What I want to do here is give kind of my overall review of this phone after using it about three months here, guys. I've had a pretty good time with it. Um, obviously, I daily drive the Galaxy S24 Ultra, so this is has been a secondary phone, uh, but I feel like I've got a pretty good amount of use with it and have kind of formed some good overall opinions on the phone. As I stated in the unboxing, I kind of bought this phone as a science experiment to see what it would be like to have a entry-level Samsung phone when I'm used to the flagships, right? And in buying this phone, my biggest concern was I was concerned that the speed <clears throat> might be an issue. You know, going from a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 to, you know, a more, you know, budget-friendly processor. Okay, so let's just kind of dive right into all this, and let's go ahead and start by talking about the price tag. Okay, so this phone costs $199 full retail price from Samsung. I actually got it um, with my trade-in credit when I bought my S24 Ultra uh, back in, I think it was January, they gave me a $150 in-store credit uh, with the pre-order. So I went ahead and picked up this phone. So it actually only cost me $49. Um, but it's normally $200 full <laughs> retail price about. So obviously I think you could get it for less um, if you looked around. But let's go ahead and go through each category here. Um, let's start off with the speed, which was my number one concern in getting this phone. So this particular variant, I don't know if this is the U.S. model or what they classify this as, this has the MediaTek Dimensity 6100 processor in it. And... My experience has been kind of a little lackluster, okay? It has been a little bit on the slow side. It's not terrible. It's not even bad. I might classify it as even a little below average for what I would like. Is it detrimental to the operation of the phone? I would say... Not really, if you're just doing normal or basic tasks. The phone feels relatively fast, and that's in part, obviously, due to the 90 hertz refresh rate on the display. But, yeah, I mean, guys, if speed is your thing, you might want to look elsewhere. I... That, in my opinion, of all the categories we're about to discuss, this first category of speed is probably the biggest disadvantage to this phone. And that's kind of what I suspected going into it. Um, it's probably been the most... Um, trying to think of the right I don't want to use the word disappointing because I kind of expected it but it's kind of that it, it's kind of where if I could fix one thing about this phone I think I'd throw in a Qualcomm chip even if it was a middle of the road chip or a faster MediaTek chip it's nothing against MediaTek per se it's just yeah, that's kind of the major corner cut here, guys, I would say. And what's interesting about this is in stark contrast to the speed of this phone, the display is actually very, very good. So we have this 6.5-inch display, which is a pretty large size, right? 
We do have the teardrop notch, which obviously seems a little bit dated, but beyond that, this is a 90 hertz panel. It's super ammo lead. It's 396 PPI, so relatively high PPI count there for a budget phone. It's got pretty good viewing angles, again, for the price. The brightness gets up to 800 nits, which isn't terrible. I mean, that's not bad. At this maximum brightness, like, that's too bright for me. So I usually keep it around in here. I'll turn it back down. But yeah, guys, I love the display on this phone. This is probably, you know, for the money, it kind of shocks me a little bit that you're getting this high quality of a display. But Samsung is known for that, right? They're just known for having rock-solid displays. And even the Galaxy A15 here does not disappoint. Let's look at the build. So if I take off this case, and this is a Spigen case, and I can throw a link in the description for it. Very nice case. I think I paid $15 for it. But here is the phone, um, nice flat display. Of course, I mentioned the teardrop notch. We do have our SIM tray here on the left side. I did leave this kind of plastic that comes from the factory on the side because these are, uh, this is a plastic frame, guys. It looks like it's metal, but it's not metal. Okay, we do have a microphone up here. We've got a volume rocker here on the right side with our power button, which is also a fingerprint reader, okay? On the bottom, we've got our single firing bottom speaker, USB Type-C, another microphone, and yeah, you do have a headphone jack, and I was really happy about that. That's kind of one of the reasons I got this particular model was because I did want that headphone jack. Flipping the phone over here, we've got a plastic back with a triple camera setup. So it does look modern. It does look current with the triple camera setup. You have the LED flash there, which is flush. And you've got Samsung branding down here. This is a blue color. It's kind of a dark, like navy blue. It's got kind of this solar reflect or whatever you want to call that when you turn the phone. I think it looks really good. The white one also looked good. That was actually the one I wanted to get, but they were sold out when I ordered it. So build-wise, guys, for the money, I'd say it's pretty good because it looks good. Uh, obviously, you don't have water resistance here and you don't have wireless charge. So the wireless charge might be a pretty big disappointment to some people, the fact that it doesn't have that, but you are at a $200 price tag. Okay, let's talk about cameras. And guys, for a lot of these categories, I did an independent video, this particular one of cameras. If you go watch that video, you'll get to see samples of both photos and pictures, but I'm going to keep it kind of basic and to the point here. We do have a 50 megapixel primary lens followed by a 5 megapixel ultra wide and then a 2 megapixel macro lens. I'm glad it has the macro lens simply because it gives the three camera look. Okay, uh, like I said in that uh, camera video, the 50 megapixel lens on this phone at full resolution is actually pretty good, guys. It's actually surprisingly, if we even want to say that because this is a Samsung phone, it's good. The 5 megapixel ultra wide is more utilitarian, as is the macro. They both get the job done, but 
it's more in a utilitarian fashion versus a <clears throat> nice beauty. Uh, you know, the pictures don't look the most colorful and vibrant and good as the main camera. So something to keep in mind. Both the front and the rear cameras do only 1080p at 30 frames per second video. However, I will say that the video from the rear camera here is very, very good, even though it is 1080p at 30. I would say it's arguably the best feature of the cameras on this phone is its video quality. For the front-facing camera, we do have a 13 megapixel. It's kind of middle of the road, guys. It's not the best I've ever seen. I mean, for me, eh, it's not really there for where I would want it to be, but it is what it is. Software-wise, we've got a very, very nice software suite here guys I and mean, we've got one ui6 with android 14 okay you do have the sidebar you do have bixby routines you don't have good lock okay so that's if you're looking for good lock it's not found here you do have the one-handed operation plus app I do love that, but as I said in the software video on this phone, this phone has probably at least 80% of the software features that my S24 Ultra has from the factory. If you discount good lock and just talk about standard software features and discount the S Pen, Otherwise, it has pretty good amount of features here, guys. I mean, having the sidebar is huge. So, you know, you do the notification panel. It looks the same as my S24 Ultra. You know, I like the software on this phone. I think you get a lot of good software customization for the price. Biometrics wise, <clears throat> we do have two options. We got the front facing camera there for face unlock. Yes, you do have face unlock and you have fingerprint unlock with the power button here on the side that doubles as a fingerprint reader. I don't use the fingerprint reader guys just because I'm not a big fan of of the side mounted or top mounted buttons. I like the end display ones. I use the face unlock. And while it can be a little on the slow side and you do have to hold the phone close to your face, it does work most of the time. It's actually pretty good. The fingerprint reader I found not to be quite as accurate as the face unlock, but I like that Samsung includes some both. Um, speaker wise, um, this one's interesting because you do only have a bottom firing speaker here. There is no dual speaker setup which it's been a long time, guys, since I've not had a dual <coughs> speaker set up. Nonetheless, this bottom firing speaker is not bad. As a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and play a quick audio sample so you can hear it. So I pulled up my uh, <coughs> podcast here from my website. I use royalty-free music, so I have the volume maxed out. Let's go ahead and play, play here and see what it sounds like. So as you could hear there, nice and loud. Might not be the best sound quality wise, but it is relatively loud. What I found was after watching say a YouTube video for about five minutes, I forgot that it was even single speaker, pretty much. 
Um, you do have the Dolby Atmos, <laughs> so you can turn that on. Um, but it's only with headphones or Bluetooth headsets. So that was a little on the disappointing side. But I would say overall, the single speaker here is good. Obviously, it's not as good as a dual speaker setup. But if you're not used to a dual speaker setup, after a while, you probably, or even if you are, you might not even, you know, miss the dual speaker setup that much once you get used to it because it is pretty loud and it does sound pretty decent. So that, that's kind of where that's at. Finally, the battery. So this does have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is very, very high, guys, for this phone. I'm just really surprised that Samsung put this high of a battery capacity in the A15 here. And guys, while I did not daily drive this phone, and that's kind of why I didn't do an independent battery video, I will say that the battery performance on this phone has been very good. The standby time is very good. Um, I don't have exact numbers because I didn't daily drive it, so I don't want to talk a whole lot about this area. But remember, you are at a 90 hertz display. There is no always on display. You're at 396 PPI. So I think your battery life is going to be pretty good. Okay. Um, I would say, arguably, battery life might be this phone's strongest point of all the categories. So in wrapping up this video, guys, what would I say is kind of, you know, the the summary of the different categories? What is the biggest detriment to the Galaxy A15 here? And I would say, you know, it's got to be the speed, right? That MediaTek Dimensity 6100, eh, you know, I think it just, I wish it had a little bit better processor in it. I think if this phone had a better processor, it would really be something else. But if you set the processor aside for a second and look at the rest of the phone, it's very, very good, guys. The strongest point on this phone is the 6.1 inch or 6.5 inch display. It's just a very, very solid display for the money, guys. And what's interesting about that is, in my opinion, the display is the most important part of the phone, right? I would say even over the speed, you'll want to have a good display. Speed would probably be the second most important, but... I really like the display here. The build is good, even though it is plastic. The cameras are actually pretty good. At least maybe the front-facing camera could use a little bit of help. Um, but overall, with that 50 megapixel main lens and the fact that you do have ultra-wide, even though it is low megapixel, at least you have it. So the cameras aren't bad overall, big picture perspective for the price. Software is really good. Biometrics are good because you do have both options of face and fingerprint. Speaker is good even though it is a single firing speaker. And the battery is really good, perhaps even bigger uh, grander than the display itself. It just depends on how you look at it. I would say the display and the battery are competing for the best feature of this phone. I mean, 
Battery might be the best feature even over the display just because you got such a large battery here. And it's not a very thick phone, guys. I mean, it's a relatively thin phone. So I'm just very impressed uh, with the Galaxy A15 here. Um, if somebody had handed me this phone for a week and had me use it as my daily driver and said, well, what do you think this phone costs? You know, after using it about a week, I would have guessed just based on the screen quality, based on the battery, I would have said probably $499 to $599 full retail price. So about five to six hundred bucks. That's the feel that I get from this phone. So it surprises me, guys, <laughs> to say that this phone only costs $199, 200 bucks. I think for the price, Samsung is really doing a good deal here, guys, for this phone. If you can get kind of past that speed being a little on the slow side, if the front-facing camera is not a super big deal, if you don't mind the teardrop notch, if you don't mind, <clears throat> you know, a side-mounted fingerprint, if you don't mind just the single bottom firing speaker, if you don't mind a plastic build, I think this is a really, really good phone. I mean, for the money, I don't see how you could go wrong. I personally would probably struggle a little bit with this as my daily driver just because I'm used to the faster speeds, right? I'm used to the top-of-the-line processor. Um, I'm used to better cameras. Um, I'm used to a, a little bit better speaker. But besides those things, guys, for some people, this might actually be a doable daily driver. Some people might find this is perfectly fine. I would say if you're a light user, this could easily be a daily driver. For a medium user, user I think it's more borderline. Um, but it pro some people could probably be fine with it as a daily driver. So, um, yeah, guys, I mean... This is it, the Galaxy A15. I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad that, you know, I've, I've used it this last three months. Uh, it's been an interesting phone for sure. So, guys, those are my thoughts and looking at the Samsung Galaxy A15 5G here. As always, guys, if you're enjoying my videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Of course, hitting that thumbs up button there helps out as well. But for now, guys, peace out.